Today we've got some salmon, we're going to smoke it, and we're going to can it. But I want to tell you one thing that I've learned. It's taking the fish like this, putting it in your smoker and smoking it, then after it's done, you're ready to eat it, you take it out, you put it in the jars, and you can it to kill all the bacteria, you end up with a product like this. And this is one that I did. And you have to put a little oil in there because it dries it out. So you're actually cooking it twice and it dries it out too much. Now I'm going to show you a little method today I want you to try. And you have to try this and experiment with it. But we're going to take fish, fresh fish, and we're going to smoke it. But we're going to take and smoke it in a big chief smoker with a smoke chief attachment. Now the, the reason we're going to do this is there will be no heat. We'll just use the smoke. We're only going to smoke it for about an hour. I just want that nice, light, smoky taste. So I'm going to fillet my fish, which I've already got done, and then I'm going to skin it. And I'm going to lay it on my racks. Now, I like to lay it on a rack with one of these drying screens. They're like a nylon screen. You want to be careful if you're using these in a propane smoker, it'll melt them. But these smokers don't get that hot and they won't bother. Them. So I'm going to skin it, lay the pieces on there, put it in the rack there, and then we'll turn on the smoke chief for about an hour. And you'll see, I'll show you how much smoke comes out of this thing. You won't believe the smoke, so you only need to do it about an hour. Then we'll take it out of there, we'll put it in our jars, put it in our pressure cooker, and pressure cook it. And it'll be just like the regular canned salmon, nice and moist, but have that smoky flavor. So we're going to skin this. And skinning is easy. You, uh, I always cut back down here, grab a hold of the skin, and sort of use a seesaw method. Now if you've got a real sharp knife like I've got, sometimes you'll cut through the skin. I just cut through it right there. But you want to go all the way down and take most of the skin off. Now if I had a duller knife, it would be a little different. But I really sharpened this one up, so I'm just going to go down again, turn the knife sideways, and just take all the skin off. So then I'm going to put my pieces on my rack like so. And we'll do it this way. Now I'm going to cut the pieces to size whenever I put them in the jar. You could leave some of the skin on. My mother, when she canned fish, she always left the skin on. Then later years, we start taking it all off. But skinning fish is simple. Just do like I did. Just go down to the skin, turn it sideways, pull and seesaw like so, and you'll end up with nice pieces of fish and the skin. So we'll go ahead and we'll load this thing up now with skinned fish. Now, in flaying your fish, you're going to have a little bit of meat left on the backbone. Most people throw this away. I don't throw anything away, especially if I'm canning or smoking. Now, I'm going to take my knife, and I'm going to put it right along the edge of these rib bones, and I'm going to turn it sideways, and I'm going to get these little pieces of salmon, like so, and I'm going to use those to fill in, in my jar, the little voids that I'm going to have. And if you look at that, you get, actually get some pretty nice pieces. Now, you're going to do it on both sides, clean both sides off. Don't waste anything. Now, another cute little trick is if you have these pieces like this and you have several salmon, I put it in my brine that I'm going to smoke with, and then I smoke it, and you end up with pieces like this. And my grandkids, they think it's jerky. It's some of the nicest little pieces you'll ever have. Remember, put that on the top shelf whenever you're smoking, because it's going to get done way ahead of the big, thick pieces. All right, so don't waste anything. Take the backbone, trim all the pieces off of both sides, just like I'm doing here, and uh, you'll be able to use that in your canning and also in your smoking. All right, now we could smoke in the Big Chief smoker using the heating element. We'd add heat to it, and you'll lose some of the fat and some of the oil out of the fish, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take a smoke chief, and this is a smoke chief that gives you a cold smoke, and it runs off of pellets. We're going to fill up this little thing here, and I'm going to use today cherry. You could use any flavor you like. And it was, doesn't take that much for an hour, but I'm going to put I'm going to put half of this container in there. And I'm going to put my top on it. And I have made mine accessible to my smoker. I drilled a hole in the side. really easy to do. And if I wasn't showing it to you, I would have it uh, So I would take it on mine, I have it in the backyard, I keep it hooked up all the time. But you can put it in there like that, you just drill a hole, it's really easy to install. I've uh, put it on there, and I'm going to turn it on, and it won't take any time at all 
and it will start smoking. So we're going to put about an hour's worth of smoke on this fish. We don't want to get it too heavy with smoke. We just want to have a nice smoky taste. So I'm going to leave the door open here and you'll see the, it won't take long. You can see it coming already. If you look down here, but it won't take this long and it's going to, you can see the smoke already, but it's cool. It's not going to have any heat. So I'm going to put my cover back on my smoker and look at the timer and I'm going to go for about an hour. 45 minutes to an hour will be plenty. I'm going to let that build up in there a little bit and then I'm going to open the door and show you how much smoke. You won't believe how much smoke this puts out in a short period of time, but no heat. I can just do it. If you run a smoked cheese, you can put it in there, the cheese won't melt. So that smoked cheese is one of the nicest new things for smoking that we've got. Now, I'm going to open this door, watch this now. I mean, I didn't have that in there a minute, and I already got all that smoke. So now we're going to leave it, leave it in there for an hour, and then we're going to take it out and put it in the jar with some can. All right, I'm going to take some of these pieces out of the smoker now. We've smoked this for an hour, and you notice it's changed in color just a little bit. It looks uh, paler, but whenever I cut into it. Now I'm going to cut. You want to fill the jars up to this first glass ring. You need a three-quarters of an inch headspace. If you don't have the headspace, it'll expand and break the bottom out of your jar. So I cut it off so it'll fit into that jar. Now you see the color? before you smoke it and then after you smoke it. So you're going to have that nice light smoke. Then you take that piece, you lay it in the jar like so. Then I'm going to fill up the voids with some more salmon. Now remember those little pieces I had. I'll show you how that will come in handy. And I'm going to cut this one to length also, like so. I'm going to take these pieces. I'm going to put those down in there and fill up all the little voids. You need to get it as full as you can. Now those little pieces that I cut off the backbone, that's going to go in here take up all that space. Now remember you can't fill, don't get greedy and try to fill the jar too full. If you do, as it expands, it'll blow the bottom out of the jar. You'll start taking them out of your pressure cooker and the bottom will be blown out. It expands, it'll just blow the bottom out. So you can't, got to make sure you've got from here up to the top with no fish on it. That's going to be your head space. So we cut these to length. I always just set it down there next to the jar. Cut it right to that first band like so. Do the same thing with the second one. Put these pieces in your jar. Like this. You want to try to get all that air out of there you can because you want to get as much fish in there as you can possibly get in there. Like this. And then we're going to get ready to put the salt on there. Now, you want to use salt. You don't have to put salt in there, but it'll, it'll turn out much better. And you want canning or pickling salt. It has to be plain salt. So you're going to add a half a teaspoon to every pint, like so. Put it in there like this. Go through and do every one of them. Then after you're done, you're going to wipe the rim of the glass off and check it to make sure that it isn't broken or chipped. So you get a clean rag and you go just like this and you wipe it off and you set it over here. And I'm going to get all mine set out just like that and then I'm going to put the lid on there. Now I've got all my jars, I've got my salt in there, plain salt, canning salt. I'm going to wipe the rim like so with a clean cloth and I'm feeling it. Make sure there isn't a chip. I'm going to submerge my lids in some hot boiling water. That softens up the seal. Then I'm going to put my ring on there and tighten it down. Now tighten it just as tight as you can tighten it because when it gets in there and it starts working in the in the pressure cooker, it seems like it wants to loosen up. I don't know why, but it always does. So get the lid out of the hot water, put it on top of there, and that is going to make that nice, soft, and pliable. And when I tighten it down, you'll have a nice seal. I'm getting all those ready. All right now. That's the last one, and then we're going to move them over here and put them in the pressure cooker. All right, now to can fish, you have to have a pressure cooker. And the reason you have to have a pressure cooker is water boils at 212 degrees. All bacteria doesn't die until it gets to 230, so you couldn't get it any hotter than 212. But by putting it under pressure, you can get up to 245 degrees. So you have to have a pressure cooker. Now this is the type that I, this was the first one I ever got, and I got it for my birthday one time when I was 18 years old. 
The thing I dislike about it is it has a rubber gasket and they shrink and you won't seal. Then you have to go to the store and buy one if you can find one. It's almost impossible to find one anymore. So I have went to this pressure cooker. It's the best there is. It's an all-American pressure cooker. You'll buy it one time. You'll never have to replace it. The reason it's so good, it's metal to metal. It doesn't have a gasket. It seals every time as long as you tighten the lid down just right. So I'm going to put my jars in there. Now there's a plate here. It's got a little lip on it. You put that down. I'm going to put my jars in here. Then I'm going to add some water. You want to start this all out at the same temperature, all cold. So I'm putting my jars in, like so. After I get them in there, then I'm going to have to add some water. The water is what's going to do the cooking. So I want to add some water so it comes two thirds of the way up on the jar. You don't need too much, but if you don't have enough, you'll run out of water before the process is done. So two thirds of the way up the jar, I filled it up. Now I've got more jars, so I have another layer. I can put that in there and I can just keep adding some more. I can run two layers. That's what's neat about this canner. Now a lot of people would say, all right, now you've got two layers, you need more water. No, that water is going to build up steam and pressure. You need the same amount whether it's one layer, two layers, or three layers. I even have a canner that has room where I can do them, stack them three high, do 32 pints at one time. So we got them in there, and then we're going to put the lid on, close it up, and bring it up to temperature. All right, now I've got all my jars in there, and I put the lid on. The only thing you have to remember is you tighten it down across from one another. So in other words, you want the lid to come down even. If it come down cattywampus, it might leak. It'll, it'll seal every time if you, if you tighten it down, and you can look at the crack. It's the same width on this side as it is on that side, on both sides, so it's even. Now I'm going to turn the heat up on full bore, and I'm going to get that water to start boiling. Once it starts boiling, and this vent here starts venting, when it starts venting, I'm going to take my weight. We call this a shaker or weight. It has three settings, a 5, a 10, or a 15. And I'm going to set it on the 10. Once it reaches 10 pounds of pressure, then it starts shaking. And I'm going to level my heat off at 12 pounds of pressure, and I'm going to write the time down. I'm going to cook it for 90 minutes. 12 pounds of pressure at 90 minutes will kill all the bacteria in the jar. If you cut that time frame short, you're going to have trouble. You'll get botulism in the can or in the jar. So you have to do 90 minutes at 12 pounds of pressure. Then whenever the 12 pounds of pressure after the 90 minutes, turn it off. Don't try to move it. Let the pressure go all the way down. When it's at zero on your gauge, take the shaker off. Make sure there's nothing, no steam going out of it. Unbutton it and you take the jars out and set them on the countertop. We'll do that whenever we're done. All right, now we've had our fish in here for 90 minutes at 12 pounds of pressure. I shut the heat off. You let it just set. You let the temperature or the pressure go all the way down. You take your shaker off, shaker off, and make sure there's no steam coming out. And then you can unhook the side screws. And we're going to take off the top. There won't be any pressure left in here because we've let it all off. I'm going to take our top off, and I always do it. There's a tool you can buy to take these out of here, but I always use a rag, a wet rag, and you take them out. I'm going to set them here on my rubber mat. You can see they're bubbling. They're, they're really hot. So you don't want to touch them. And I'm going to let them set here and not disturb them. And as they start to cool, they'll contract, and it'll pull a vacuum on your lid, and you'll hear the lid pop down. So, you see how they're bubbling. You don't want to try to handle anything any more than you have to. You get burnt. And with any luck, all of these will seal. I did a batch earlier of quartz. And this is what I had left over. They were half, they were pints, and these are half pints. So, so here's what it looks like after it's smoked. Now this is with a light smoke. Remember, this is the one that I'd smoked and then I canned it. And you see how much drier this is going to be. I think you're going to like doing it that way. A little bit of coal smoke with the smoke chief. Then put it in your jars. Put a half a teaspoon of salt in here, plain salt. Do your same thing, the procedure like you're canning. 12 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes.
and all that's in there is fish and a half a teaspoon of salt. That's the oil that's out of the fish. I heard one of them pop there, one of them just sealed. So. All right, now, here's some plain salmon that I can, and here's some that I put the cold smoke on. Now, you can tell the difference, but what I always do is I write on the top, smoke and the date. But you don't have to if you were trying to tell the difference. This has that little amber look, the caramel colored look, and this is just the plain, so you'd know which it was. And the same way, with the little ones. Here's the plain one, and here's one here with just a little smoke. You just tell the difference in the color. Now after they seal, you push on the lid, it's form that vacuum. You put it on the shelf and it'll last you for years. Nothing can go bad. Whereas a can has a liner in it. Glass doesn't have any liner, doesn't need any. Only thing, if, it ever, if you ever lose the seal, then you have to throw it away. And you can store it for two, three, four years like this. If a jar happens not to seal, I hear some of these sealing right now, that doesn't mean you can't eat it, you just can't store it. You can put it in the refrigerator, or you can eat it right away, whatever. And if we have one here that doesn't seal today, I'll have it for my lunch. 